At this year's Experimental Aircraft Association Air Venture Show, I had an opportunity to fly a most interesting airplane, the Icon A5 Light Sport Amphibian. Icon Aircraft was founded nine years ago and the A5 received FAA validation as a light sport aircraft in July. My flight took place on a gorgeous summer day on Lake Winnebago near Oshkosh, Wisconsin at TJ's Harbor Restaurant. My demo pilot was Kirk Hawkins, Icon CEO and founder, and a former Air Force F-16 and American Airlines 767 pilot who also holds a master's degree in mechanical engineering. The Icon is unique, not only because it's an amphibian and it's a light sport aircraft, but also because its wings fold up and it's easily transportable by a trailer pulled behind a car. We fired up the A5's 100 horsepower Rotax 912 IS and water taxied out into the lake. Hawkins pushed the throttle full forward, executed a graceful high-speed water turn, then lifted the A5 off the water at about 40 to 45 knots. I took over the controls and flew around for a bit, including some formation flying with another A5 that was giving demos to buyers who were getting their first experience in their $200,000 plus airplane. Unlike other light sport aircraft that I've flown, the A5's controls are highly harmonious. Pitch and roll forces feel natural and well matched, and the pitch control is not too sensitive. While the A5 is designed to be a recreational vehicle, it can transport two people cross country at a high speed cruise of 95 knots and with a range of up to 427 nautical miles. The stall speed is a low 39 knots and the A5 can get off the water in just 840 feet. One unique feature of the A5 is the most prominent instrument on the panel, a large angle of attack indicator smack in the center of the pilot's field of view. The actual angle of attack is depicted by a wing shape instead of a needle, which seems much more natural and intuitive. During our flight, Hawkins demonstrated some of the A5 spin-resistant airframe features which should make the A5 safer for the average and new pilot. The A5 can be stalled, but three key design goals dictated what happens at the stall. First is that it be resistant to spinning. Second, that it be controllable while in a stall. And third, that it have a slow descent rate during a power off full stall that would still allow a survivable crash. Pulling the power back, the A5 remained fully controllable in the stall while descending about 600 feet per minute. The fact that the A5 doesn't react to a stall by dropping a wing suddenly, even when stepping on the rudder or banking with the ailerons, is a significant accomplishment. Hawkins also demonstrated an accelerated stall right into the buffet and the A5 didn't drop a wing and remained solidly stable as he unloaded the wing and recovered from the stall by pushing forward on the stick. He also showed me how the A5 will climb in a full stall with full power applied, and he said it would do so even at maximum takeoff weight. In what might be Hawkins' favorite maneuver, he showed me how the A5 does in the dreaded Box Canyon scenario, where a pilot has inadvertently flown into a canyon and can only escape by flying a maximum performance 180 degree turn without losing any altitude. There's a small island named Long Point about a mile offshore from TJ's. We flew over the island at about 200 feet, then Hawkins added power and racked the A5 into a 50 degree bank at about 55 knots and with the angle of attack pointing well into the yellow and the stall horn blaring at us. He said that we were flying about a 200 foot diameter circle, which seemed accurate. I wondered briefly about the denizens of Long Point. Were their animal brains puzzled at this big loud white bird that kept circling over them all day long? 
while A5 buyers enjoyed their demo flights. The bottom line for the spin-resistant features, Hawkins said, is that even in a high angle of attack situation, the outboard one-third of the wing remains flying, which is what allows the pilot to still have control of the A5 in a stall. The key is not to punish people if they're not perfect pilots, he explained. It's an extraordinary safety benefit, he added. I flew around some more and landed and took off a few times. Then finally, with flaps set at full 30 degrees and the landing gear up, I brought the power back and let the A5 gracefully descend. The touchdown on the water was a little anticlimactic. The hull made contact briefly, skipped back into the air and then touched down again and stuck. I pulled the power back and the hull grabbed the water more firmly and we were down. After the flight, I asked Hawkins about the long gestation of this iconic airplane, for which the company holds about 2,000 orders. He said, airplane development is super challenging. When he had first committed to bringing a new airplane and company to market, he said it was a soul-searching moment, and little did he know it would take almost 10 years of his life. But thanks to the huge backlog, he added, our goal is to hit break-even next year. Financially, we're in great shape.